This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Today's story features a well-known photographer and diver who spent 35 years photographing and observing the ocean, resulting in an extraordinary ebook. In spending those years underwater, I've seen things change and they look different now than they did when I first started diving. That is Mark Shargell. My baseline impression of the ocean was formed on Monterey Peninsula in the late 70s when we had things like black abalone that were abundant. That species is now federally endangered, and I haven't seen a live one with my eyes while diving in over 20 years. And Mark realized that his years of diving was just a snapshot in time. So when I realized that my own idea of what was, quote, natural was totally subjective, I thought, well, 35 years actually isn't that long. So what happens if I try to extend my capacity for establishing a baseline image farther back in time? So Mark started doing research and found photographs from 100 years ago from the Public Library in Monterey, along with images from the collection of photo archivist Pat Hathaway. The result is an e-book entitled Yesterday's Ocean. It's essentially a photographic essay using some of my own very contemporary color photographs and then many, many of the archival photographs I found of the enormous industries based on ocean natural resources, many of which are simply no longer present. California established marine protected areas in the Central Coast in 2007, followed by designations along California's entire coast by 2012. But in fact, there is a much longer history to the state's interest in marine protection. This is one of the things that just, I had to pick my jaw up off of the table. A hundred years ago, the California state legislature started establishing marine protected areas up and down the California coast. As far as I can tell, they all got wiped off the books in 1933. I suspect because of the timing, in the economic throes and pressure of the Great Depression. I asked Mark what he hopes his online readers come away with from learning about this history. I guess it would be two things. For people who don't know any of this history, don't even know what we did in the last few years in establishing the new marine protected areas, I would hope that they would, first of all, learn that those exist because it's the end of the story bringing us to the present day. And for everybody, even people like me who are involved in the policy of making those protected areas, to realize that, believe it or not, we've been here before, and we didn't have the determination and the patience and the tenacity to leave those early 20th century protected areas in place for more than about 25 years. All the science that we now know tells us that we're going to have to be very patient and very steadfast and be really good stewards and take care of these numerally protected areas until you and I and everybody who hears this podcast are probably gone. It's going to be future generations that will reap the full benefits of these things. We're seeing scientific results that show that they're starting to work already, which is fantastic news. But all the science says it's going to take a long time until we see the glimmerings of the yesterday's ocean that this booklet documents. And our thanks to Mark Shargell. And here are a few everyday actions that you can take to help support California's marine protected areas. You can go out and explore your local MPA. Check out a tide pool, kayak, and just enjoy these areas. You can become a citizen scientist and help monitor them. Links on our website and YouTube page will direct you to further resources. You can also get involved in the decision-making process by attending and giving your input at public hearings, such as the Fish and Game Commission and Ocean Protection Council meetings. For more information about California's marine protected areas, please visit our website, thankyouocean.org mpas. I'm Jerry Kay.